All right, so tip number one, how to change the color of your keyboard, also known as the high contrast keyboard. So let's launch the messaging application over here, and there's the keyboard. So that's the stock basic keyboard. If you press and hold this icon right over here, it brings up a tiny menu. On the side, you can tap on settings, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll see something called high contrast keyboards. If you enable the high contrast keyboard, and if you go back, as you can see, now you have a high contrast keyboard that actually looks very, very cool. All right, tip number two, as you know, you can use your fingerprint to unlock your Samsung Galaxy S7. What you probably don't know is you can actually use your fingerprint to make purchases on Play Store without having to put your password in every single time. The way to get this done is go into the Play Store, and then you tap on this icon over here, and go all the way down where it says settings, click it, and make sure that the fingerprint authentication is in fact enabled. The first time you check this box, it's gonna ask you to put your password in, and the next time you're not gonna to have to because you will be using your fingerprint to make the purchases. Now here's one of my favorite features called the private mode. Let's go into the settings and pull this mode up really quick. So go to personal, go to lock screen and security. I'm sorry, go into privacy and safety and then simply tap on private mode. Private mode is a little bit complicated. First and foremost, you have to enable the private mode and while the private mode is on, you have to hide certain pictures and files that you don't want other people to see and then you turn off the private mode and by turning off the private mode, those pictures and files go into hiding. So anytime you wanna see those pictures, you have to re-enable private mode and of course, it is protected with a passcode. Let's walk you through this so you can see exactly what it does. So let's turn this on, and it's gonna ask you what kind of password do you want. Let's go with a pin, and let's just do something simple for now, for demonstration. Now the private mode is in fact enabled. Now let's go into the gallery application. Uh, let's launch the gallery application right over here. And let's say this picture right here is something that I want to actually hide from other people. All you have to do is tap on more and choose move to private. Okay, so that picture has been moved to private. Now if I go back into the album, you will notice that the photo is still there and it has a small icon right next to it. That icon indicates that it is a picture that I designated as a private picture. But you're probably wondering, why am I still seeing it? So in order to hide this, you have to go back into the settings, go into privacy and safety, go into the private mode again, and make sure you turn off the private mode. Alrighty, so let's go back out. Let's go back into the gallery, and now that photo is in fact hiding. So just to clarify, if I wanna see this again, I would have to go back in here, settings, privacy and safety, private mode. Now when you turn this on, obviously it's gonna ask you for a passcode, otherwise there would be no point. So when you enable this, if I go back into the gallery, the private content is now available. And one more thing with the private mode, it doesn't only apply to pictures, it applies to just about any file. So you can use it in the gallery or the My Files application. If you go into My Files, uh, which is under Samsung in your app drawer, you can launch it. Let's say you have a document that you wanna hide. Just click on the document, press and hold to make sure that particular document has been checked and then click more and simply tap move to private. And that will do the same thing that happened to the picture earlier. It's going to hide it. And of course you have to make sure that, um, let's go back in here. You have to make sure this is turned off so that nobody else can see the files that you hid. And only you can see them with your password later when you please. Let's move on. All right, next feature, let's go into the settings and let's go back into privacy and safety. At the bottom here, it says send SOS messages. Let's tap on this. And what you can do here is you can enable SOS uh, messages. Just make sure you agree to all the terms. And once you enable SOS messages, it's going to ask you to at least add one contact. So let's do that. So I just picked a random number. 
let's go back over here so what is this all about this is all about emergency so if you're having an emergency you can press the power button on the side three times and what that's going to do is it is going to send out a stress signal to your emergency contacts and you can have as much as four total emergency contacts just so you know and you add them right over here and then you can also tell the phone to take a picture using the front and the rear camera as well as an audio recording right before the signal is sent out to your emergency contacts. So to send the signal, like I said, press power key three times in succession right over here, and boom, it's going to record some audio, it's going to take pictures on the front, on the rear, and it's going to send that message with the pictures, the attachments, to those three contacts. This is a great choice to have just in case of an emergency. So let's move on to the next feature. So this feature has you covered just in case you lose your phone. Let's go into the settings, and this is something anybody should do immediately as soon as they buy a Samsung phone. Go into settings, under personal, go into lock screen and security, and make sure you're going to find my mobile. Once, once you tap find my mobile, it's going to ask you to log in using your Samsung account. If you don't have a Samsung account, make sure you create one because that's the only way you can use this feature. So let's tap on this. I'm going to put my password in to log into my Samsung account. Click confirm. And then once you're here, make sure you enable remote controls and Google location service. And that's all you have to do. So let's say you lose your phone. What you can do is you can go to your any computer, all right? And you can type this website address called findmymobile.samsung.com. And from here, you can track and control your device remotely. So you can make sure your uh, device makes a noise. You can make sure you delete everything on your device remotely. And the most important thing is you can in fact track your device. So if you lost the phone by a real accident, you can retrace yourself and find the phone. You do not want to lose this phone. It's an expensive phone. And uh, the best thing to do is enable as many security features as you can. So as you know, the Samsung Galaxy S7 comes with the latest version of Android. With Marshmallow, you get some really nice and deep features. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. Let's go into the settings and let's go into applications. From here, you want to go into application manager and that's going to load up all the applications you have on your phone. And what I want to show you is if you tap on a specific application, you can deep dive into the exact permissions that application has as far as controlling your phone goes. So let's tap permissions over here. And as you can see, Amazon Kindle does not have access to my contacts, my phone or my storage. But if I want to, I can enable that. So now Amazon Kindle has access to my storage. And if you tap more, you can actually go into all permissions and that's going to show you just about every single permission that application has on your phone. So this is a great way to just monitor what app has what kind of power over your phone. Let's move on. All right, so the next tip has to do with customizing your messages application right over here. So let's tap that. And if you go into any message, as you can see, the presentation is pretty bland. You have got a white background and that's all you have. What you can do is you can go into the settings by tapping more, go into settings, you can tap on backgrounds and you can actually pick a custom background from here. That's going to give it a little bit more spice to your uh, messages when you're chatting with your buddies. And if you want, you can also click this plus icon and that will take you into your gallery and from there you can pick some other picture like this elephant. So click done and that's exactly what it's going to look like and you can get a quick you get a quick preview which is what I like. So this is my favorite right over here so I'm going to keep that and that's one tip to customize your phone. Now the other thing is also in the messages if you go back in there if you tap on more and if you go into the settings and if you click more settings at the bottom here it's going to say delete old messages. If you enable this, it's going to delete the oldest message when the maximum number of text messages reach a thousand. Now for the text it's going to be a thousand the limit and for multimedia messages it's going to be a hundred. So your phone at all times is going to only store a thousand text messages and 100 multimedia messages. This may save you some space in the long run. Also if you are the kind of person that likes to keep all their messages, make sure this 
setting is actually off. It may be turned on by default, so just be careful. Let's go back out. Now, as you know, Samsung Galaxy S7 comes with a fast charging mode. So if you plug your phone to the wall to charge, you're going to get a super fast charging. It's going to charge your phone in an hour from 0 to 100%. That is amazing. Now, you have to make sure this option is, in fact, enabled. So let's go into the settings, and let's go to battery under system and you have to make sure fast cable charging is enabled otherwise if you plug your phone to your charger it's not going to charge fast and you're going to wonder why so make sure this is in fact enabled